Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.7.8, an Eagle Dynamics FA18C Hornet module. Welcome to tutorial 1, Startup. You find us today on the Theodore Roosevelt Carrier, this is the supercarrier module, and uh, we're on deck and the aircraft is cold and dark. And we're going to go through a full startup procedure. I'll show you to get this jet ready to be launched off of the supercarrier. Let's jump into the office for starters. And uh, very first thing that we're going to do is establish power. Actually, I'm going to hide that stick. Uh, establish power by switching the battery switch to the on position. Once we do this, the miniature caution and warning panel down here lights up. Uh, it's indicating that the flight control system is not operating or it has a fault uh, and battery switch is on and the battery is discharging so this is pretty normal we also have master caution illuminated just now uh, but we can't see the further cautions because they're displayed on the ddis and at this time the ddis are not illuminated so uh, before we go ahead and start the apu and then the engine we're going to conduct the fire test let's get my head in a position here where we should be able to see all the lights uh, we have two fire loops a and b i'm going to run the a test first i'm going to push and hold the fire test switch here forwards and we're going to listen for the warnings and make sure that we get all of the uh, correct lights engine fire left engine fire left engine fire right engine fire right apu fire apu fire bleed air left bleed air left bleed air right that's all good Okay, so we have uh, indicated fire on left and right engines, APU, and left and right bleeds are illuminated, and we also have ma the master caution there. We're going to release, and uh, in order to run that test again for the other circuit, I have to turn the battery off, wait a couple of seconds, and then turn it back on. And then we're going to repeat, but this time we're going to push the switch uh, towards us to do uh, loop B. And this should look exactly the same as, as loop A. And then bleed air right. Okay, we release the switch back to the normal position, and now we just have master caution. That's good, that's exactly what we want. Uh, we're now going to start the APU, we just flick the switch to on. APU startup is fully automatic. While we're waiting for that to run, uh, once it is running we're going to get a green ready light here. which we now have, uh, we now have sufficient uh, air pressure to start the engines. Uh, before I go ahead and start the engine though, I'm going to close the canopy so that my paperwork doesn't end up in the intake. And also things will be a little bit quieter at that stage. There we go. And uh, I'm now going to, well, I need to monitor the IFI, which is this integrated uh, engine and fuel instrument here. I'm going to push engine crank to the right. We're going to start the right engine first that sits in that position. We can see that right engine is spooling up. I usually wait for it to get to about 25% and at that stage I pop the throttle out of cutoff into idle. That's 25, popping it into the idle position now. We have light, RPM increasing. And this will stabilize at around about 65% once engine start is complete. There we go. Engine start complete. We're going to get a couple of... There we go. Okay, so that, that's the main master caution system booted up now. We've got the roll left caution, which means the ground proximity warning system uh, has finished its uh, self-test. And the flight controls warning is just because the flight controls are not uh, working normally yet. Let's pop the formation and position lights on full. We're going to set the cockpit up uh, a little bit just with the right engine running. That do-do-do-do sound, that's the master caution by the way. We're not too worried about that right now. So now we're going to go ahead and set up our displays so we can see everything that's going on with the aircraft. Left DDI, switch to day. Right DDI, switch to day. Uh, MPCD, full brightness. HUD, full brightness. 
and we'll just wait for these displays to all power up. They should just take a few moments. Uh, I'm not going to run the bit tests. I'm just going to hit stop on that. Main menu, main menu again, and go to checklist. I like to have the checklist on the right. And on this left uh, DDI, we're going to go flight control system. You'll see that we now have lots of uh, caution and warnings. So uh, by default, uh, cautions and uh, actually these are cautions and advisories. Uh, cautions are in big font near the top. Advisories are at the bottom line. Um, they appear on the left DDI by default. If for whatever reason the left DDI is off, they will then appear on the center DDI. Uh, but in any case, I'm going to pop the left DDI back on and then we'll get them all up on the left DDI. I'm going to wait a couple of moments for that to boot up now. Oh, and uh, very important actually, before I talk too much more, let's pop the INS into carrier alignment mode because that takes a really long time and we don't want to be waiting for that at the end of the video. You'll see at first it's just going to flash, you know, it's going to say quality, no attitude, time is going to sit at zero and after a period of time that uh, time is going to start ticking up. Shouldn't take too much longer. Okay, so the INS is now in alignment and it's using data from the carrier cable, CV, CBL. That's what it's uh, telling us there. So these displays are all on now. Uh, we've also got our radios programmed. That's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up my standby horizon. I'm going to set up my radar altimeter and set the dangerous altitude there. Uh, I'm going to go down to here and put my radar into standby. If I was carrying a targeting pod, I could put it into standby just now. I'm going to turn on console and instrument lighting. I'm going to do a 360 on the bleed air because it automatically shut off during the fire test. I know the bleed air is in normal mode. Uh, I already turned on the exterior lights. I'm going to turn on my oxygen. Uh, I'm going to do a reset of the flight control warnings and I'm going to set takeoff trim. And now if I look at my warnings on the screen here, quite a lot of these have cleared now. I'm going to accept the master caution and then press it again to restack the warnings uh, and we're now going to proceed with left engine start. So engine crank goes to the left, just like I did with the right engine. And we can now see RPM increasing. Once we get to 25, we'll advance that throttle out of the cutoff position. Just like that, we have light, RPM increasing, and we're looking for it to stabilize at 65. There we go, left engine start complete. Uh, APU is still running, it will automatically shut down one minute after the, the final engine has started. So that's all looking good. Uh, let's do some more um, mission equipment. RWR on, ECM to standby, dispenser to on. And let's turn our helmet mounted display on and confirm that that's functioning, which it is. We're going to program our TACAN. Uh, for this carrier today, TACAN is on 7.4 X-ray. So I program 7.4 and I press on and TACAN is now responding. We have information at the top left of the HSI. Uh, we're going to go to data link and turn on the data link. We're going to go to IFF and turn on the IFF. I'm going to set my altimeter to radar. And I'm going to do a little scan of the cockpit. I think that is all the major systems done. And that's the APU just spooling down now. If I focus down here on the HSI, you can see there's still quite a bit of time to go for the alignment. Alignment on the carrier is a little bit slow. Uh, also, while we're down here, let's set our bingo. I'm going to use a bingo of 5,000 today. There we go. That's all set. Okay, uh, so that is the aircraft basically ready. What I'm going to do just now, though, is I'm going to do a full check of the uh, kind of moving parts. So launch bar down, flaps are full down. Um, I'm going to extend the refueling probe and I'm going to pop the hook down and then we're going to do an external inspection. This would normally be done by the ground crew, but, uh, you know, we're in the sim. We can have a little look at the aircraft ourselves. There we go. Refueling probe out. Launch bar down, flaps full down, and hook down. So that's a good check, and we can also.
confirm that our exterior lights are all on. That's looking pretty good. So let's pop all of that back the way it should be. Hook up, probe back in, flaps can go up to automatic, launch bar can go to retracted, and we should confirm that those lights are all out now. So the final thing we're really waiting for now is the INS. And you can see here the, the cautions and advisories. We have wing unlocked, that's okay. We leave the wings folded until we get onto the, the launch uh, on the catapult. INS is degraded, that's okay. We know that, we're currently in a line. Um, and the, oh, it says we're still running built-in tests and uh, anti-skid is off, but that's okay. Anti-skid should be off while operating on the carrier and hook bypass should be in carrier. Those are all correct. So that's looking pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and run the bit test for the RWR over here. There we go. That's a, a good test of the RWR, that looks correct. Just doing a reset of the uh, radar altimeter, that's also looking good. And it is really just waiting for the INS now. Unfortunately, the uh, the end of the INS alignment is pretty slow. Let's, uh, let's pop the ECM into built-in test as well. Uh, we'll get, a, we'll get a, a light up here once it actually completes that test. Might as well while we're waiting in any case. You'll note that I have not armed my seat and I've not fold, uh, unfolded the wings. Uh, we're going to do both of those things once we taxi to the catapults over there. So let's accelerate time because ain't nobody got time for that. The last kind of few percent is very slow. Eventually, next to quality, it's going to report OK. And that's going to be around about eight minutes. There we go. It now reports OK. So next thing to do is to put the INS into IFA. Radar can go to operate. It won't actually come on until we've got uh, weight off the wheels. And that is the aircraft fully started up and ready to use. So... Um that is the procedure for the F-18 Hornet. I hope you enjoyed that first video. I'm going to be going in detail through all the different things you can do with this aircraft, and that is a lot of things. Uh, the Hornet in DCS is very complete, and it's a very multi-role aircraft. In the next tutorial, I'll demonstrate a launch from the carrier. I hope you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you all next time.